and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to make your GIMP interface or your GIMP workspace look like Photoshop's workspace. I'll be using GIMP 2.10.14 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial and I'll be making it look like Photoshop CC 2020 which is the latest version of Photoshop at the time of this tutorial. But of course, before I get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here, as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com. And you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. Your premium membership includes access to my GIMP Help Center app, my GIMP book of layers, and future ebooks, and exclusive content not found on YouTube. You can start your premium membership with a seven day free trial, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. All right, so this tutorial is for people switching over from Photoshop to GIMP, and maybe you just prefer the Photoshop layout for now, and that's just something you're comfortable with and you just want to switch to GIMP because you can't afford Photoshop anymore or you know whatever the reason is maybe you're getting frustrated with the Adobe CC 2020 updates but whatever the reason GIMP does have a ton of functionality it's a great free program it's a great alternative to Photoshop and probably the best alternative to Photoshop out there as of the time of this video and luckily it's very customizable as well so let's dive in so if I open up GIMP here is what the default layout is gonna look like. Your workspace might be slightly different depending on what version of GIMP you're using and when exactly you downloaded it. GIMP does tend to uh, make adjustments to how the default workspace looks when you first download it. But it's gonna look something similar to this. So you have your toolbox over here in the left panel as well as the tool options below that. And then over here on the right panel, you're going to have some various tabs up top and as well as below here, you have the layers, channels, and paths tabs. And the middle portion here, which is empty, is the image window, but right now there's no composition open. On the other hand, if I open up Photoshop, I've already created a document here, but this is the essentials workspace. So on the left side, you've got one row of tools and the tools are grouped together. And then below that, you have your foreground and background color and you can switch those here. And below that, you have the option to change your screen mode. I'm gonna keep this set to standard screen mode. On the right side, you have a small panel right here, and this contains your history. So this is basically an undo history. Below that, you're going to have your properties panel. This is gonna give you information about your document. And it's gonna also allow you to show either the rulers and the guides or the grid and some other options here. And you've also got some quick actions here. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but in the top right, then you have the color and swatches tab in the far right side of the panel. And this is split up into three different columns, this panel here. The middle one is going to contain learn libraries and your image adjustments. And then the final one at the bottom here also has layers, channels, and paths, much like GIMP. All right, so let's begin this process of making our GIMP workspace look like Photoshop CC 2020's workspace. So we're not gonna be able to do everything, but we can do most of this stuff. And by the way, one thing I left out is that the very top here has your tool options, which is called the options bar in Photoshop. So every time you click on a tool, each tool is gonna have its own options and those will show up up top here. So let's minimize this. Here we are back in GIMP, so this obviously looks a lot different right now. What I'll do first is show you how to adjust my icons and my theme to make it look more similar to Photoshop's. So I'll go to Edit, Preferences. So here is our Preferences dialog. Down here under theme, you can choose your different options. I'm gonna stick with dark because that's basically what Photoshop uses. I'll come over here to the icon theme. That I am also going to stick with for now. I actually usually go with the color icons. So this is what my icons usually look like, but Photoshop uses something more similar to symbolic because it's all single color icons. And then under custom icon size, I have mine set up to large right now so that you could see them more easily. 
but Photoshop uses smaller icons, so I'm just gonna bring those down to medium. You can go all the way down to small if you want, but I think that's actually a little smaller than Photoshop, so I'll stick with medium. One additional preference you can set up, which is totally optional, is you can add some image adjustments to your toolbox. I say that because there is no image adjustments tab that you can add to the right side of your panel like in Photoshop. So if you do prefer to have those really quick accessible image adjustments like in Photoshop, this is really going to be the only way to do that. So if I come over here to toolbox, I can scroll down and once I get to the bottom, you'll start to see some common image adjustment tools here. So I can just click on whatever ones I wanna include in here and they'll pop up right here. So I'm just gonna go with all of these image adjustment ones here down to curves. So now we have all of those image adjustments right here in the toolbox. That makes them as easy to access as they are in the image adjustments tab inside of Photoshop. So once that's set up, I'm just gonna click OK. And now we have our toolbox set up. So next I'm going to move on to the right side of the panel. And because everything in GIMP is a dockable dialog, that means all of the individual tabs in each portion of the panel can be moved around or closed and new tabs can be added. So we're gonna start rearranging some things, closing down some tabs and adding some new tabs to make it look more like Photoshop's. If I come back to Photoshop, the top we had colors and swatches. So that's what I need to get set up here. And we don't need the brushes tab, which is currently open here. And we don't need the patterns, we don't need the text, and we will need this document history tab a little bit later, but not right now. So I'm just going to come over here and just close out each one of these tabs. So I'm just clicking this little menu and I'm going to close tab. And I can do that on this last tab as well. So that will close that tab out. Now all that's left is layers, channels, and paths. I will need all three of these, so I'm gonna leave these for now. So the first tab I'll add is the color tab. So I'll click on this little menu again, go to add tab, and then down here I'll choose colors. And again, this is a dockable dialog, so I can click and drag this out of here and release. So here is the colors tab, and you can see the abbreviation for this is showing up as FG slash BG, obviously that's foreground slash background. So what this is doing is it's giving you all the color options that are usually found over here. So what I usually do in my tutorials is click on this. That brings up the change foreground color dialog and this gives me the option to search through all these colors and you can see these two are moving together as I adjust this. And all of the colors in my color history here are showing up over here. So that's where that comes from. This is the HTML notation. So that's the code for this particular color. We also have the eyedropper tool here and we have our current foreground color, which is red and our background color, which is white. And I can click this little icon here to reset. That's the same as this icon. And of course I could switch those colors. And you guys can see there's a few tabs here for different color types, different color profiles. And that is the same thing that's showing up right here. So I'll come back over here to the GIMP tab and I don't need this anymore. This is just for demonstration purposes, so I'll close that out. So what I wanna do is place this above the layers, channels, and paths area. So I'm just gonna click on the tab here and drag this over, and you can see little lines showing up as I do that. So I'm just gonna drag this until my mouse pointer is above these three tabs, and I'll release. And you'll see that will put this above these tabs here. Next, I'll come back to this little menu, go to add tab again, and now I'm gonna come down to palettes. So you'll remember in Photoshop that this was the swatches tab. There is no swatches tab in GIMP, but the palette tab is essentially the same exact thing. The only difference is that this is essentially showing you groups of swatches, which are called palettes. So if I come down here and double click on this, this is actually going to open up the palette editor. And this is more or less the same thing as swatches inside of Photoshop. So there's a slight variation here, but they are essentially the same thing. And I can just close this tab out and we can only keep the palettes tab open. And I'll come back over here to the foreground background color tab. And by the way, each one of these tabs right now has an icon and in Photoshop, they do not have icons. It's only text as you can see here. And we're gonna fix that. But the next section has learn, which is tutorials, libraries and adjustments. So as I mentioned, there is no adjustments tab for GIMP, at least not at the time of this tutorial and there is no learn tab either. I do have my GIMP Help Center app and that includes a bunch of built-in tutorials for GIMP. So you can become a premium member and you'll get access to that GIMP Help Center app. 
but we do have libraries under here. And this tab gives you access to all your Creative Cloud files, which comes with Adobe products. Obviously, we're not going to have that inside of GIMP, but there is something similar to that. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to come back here and go to Add Tab. And what we do have is document history. So I'm going to click on document history. And though this is not the same as being able to search through a cloud account with all of your creative documents, it does show you all of the documents you've recently used inside of GIMP. So a lot of you who have watched my tutorials are familiar with this. It's just a long list of the files with their file names and file types. So what I'll do is I'll click on this and I'm going to drag it over here. And if I drag it between these two sections here, it's actually going to split this into thirds and this part's a little bit tricky. So I'm just going to put my mouse as close to the top here as possible and release. And as you can see, this is just adding this to the layers, channels and paths section. And actually what I need to do is I'll leave this here and I actually need to drag these three below. So I'll just click and drag with the paths tool to start. So I'm dragging it until it hits the bottom and you can see that the bottom portion is the only area that's not highlighted. So all three areas here have a highlight around it, except for the bottom. That means I'm going to place this at the bottom. So when I release, now the paths is at the bottom and now I can just simply drag the channels tab over here and the layers tab. Let me click on that one more time and I can just rearrange this. So we go layers, channels, and then paths. So now the document history is in the middle and I can readjust the size of this so we can just sort of even these columns out a little bit and I'll go back to the colors tab here. Next, I'll come to Photoshop and you'll remember there's this little side panel in between the image window and the far right panel, and that's going to contain your undo history. So if I minimize this, your undo history should be open right now by default. Depending on how GIMP sets up your default workspace, it could be in a different place. So right now for me, my undo history is over here under the toolbox and next to the tool options. So what I can do is just drag this outside and release. So now what I'll do is click on this tab and just drag it over here. And you'll see that as I do that, again, all three sides of this panel are highlighted besides the left side. That means that's where this is being placed. So when I release, that's going to place the undo history on the left side there. And I can, of course, adjust the size of this. So I first need to drag the left side out first, and then I can drag the right side of this out. And that's as thin as that will go. But now we have the document history here and if I come over, I can check out what these other two tabs are. So this is images. This will show me which images I have open right now. I don't have any. If I go to file new, for example, and just create a new document based on the default settings and click OK, you'll see now that will show up over here in images. And if I create another one, so this time, let me just open an image. So I'll open an image that I worked on recently for a tutorial. Now you can see both of these images are showing up here and I can sort of navigate between them using this tab. For the sake of this tutorial, keeping this similar to Photoshop, I don't need this, so I'm gonna close it out. So I'll click on here and go to close tab. And then we have the core pointer tab. We don't need that either, so I'll just close that tab. Now all that's left are the tool options. And I said we'd revisit the tool options. Now that we have undo history over here, which now you can see this is starting to populate now that we have an image open. And let me just close this image out actually and stick with the default. What I'll do is just click and drag the tool options over here and I'm going to put it with the undo history. That's actually not the same as Photoshop, but Photoshop now has its options bar, which is the same thing as tool options for GIMP in the top portion. And in GIMP, unfortunately, you cannot dock any of the dockable dialogues in the top portion of GIMP above the image window. So for now, just to keep this out of the way, we're going to put it over here with the undo history. And if I come over here, I can now decrease the size of this so it's a little smaller. So you can go two columns there. If you go to one column, all the tools start to get cut off and it's not practical. So I'll just go with the two column approach there. So this is essentially as close as we're going to get to making our GIMP workspace look like the Photoshop Essentials workspace. So if I wanted to save this workspace, I could go over to Edit, Preferences, come over here to Window Management, and then over here, you'll see a button that says save window positions. Now I can click on that. And you can also make sure the save window positions on exit option is checked and I'll click OK. So when you close and reopen GIMP, everything should come up the same way you have it saved right now. Photoshop allows you to have multiple types of workspaces. So there are other configurations you could set up. For example, if I come back to Photoshop 
and I come over here, I can change this. Right now it's at Essentials. Let's say for example, I wanna to go to Photography. So this is the Photography setup. It's very similar, except at the very top we have Histogram and Navigator. This allows you to see where you are on the image and that includes how far zoomed in you are. So for example, if I zoom in, it shows me where I am when I'm zoomed in and I can drag this around. So let me zoom back out. And here we have just libraries and adjustments. There's no tutorials here. And then we have some extra options here. So we have the history again. Then we have actions, which there are no actions in GIMP. You have the properties option, and that's going to tell you about your document. You've got info, that's going to tell you where your mouse pointer is and what the color is that you're pointed on. And finally, you have the clone source option. And I'm not gonna get into this because that's not really available in GIMP. But there are some tabs we could set up in GIMP to make it look like this, so let's minimize this. And I'm going to come up top to this top set of tabs and click the little menu item here and go to Add Tab. And the first thing I'll do is click on Histogram. And the second tab is going to be the Navigator tab. So you guys might be surprised that GIMP does actually have a tab called Navigation. And when I choose that, it's the exact same thing as the tab found in Photoshop. So when I zoom in, it shows me where I am on the image how far zoomed in I am, and I can zoom in or out using this little slider. And there's some plus and minus buttons here, so we can zoom in with that or zoom out. And some other options here I'm not gonna get into right now, but if I come back over here, I'm gonna close out these two tabs. So close out the color tab and the palettes tab, which is the swatches equivalent. So now we have our histogram and we have our navigation. Down here we had image adjustments, but we don't have that option for GIMP. Those are still over here in the toolbox. But I'll come up top here and we'll go to Add Tab. And the one tab we do have access to that's similar to Photoshop is the Pointer tab. So that is going to be the same thing as the Info tab in Photoshop. So when I drag my mouse, it's showing me where I am on the composition as well as what the color properties are for that pixel that I'm hovered over. And I'm just gonna come back here and navigate to the Tool Options because that's the most common tab that we're going to be using in our compositions. So I do recommend saving this workspace if you prefer the photography workspace over the essential workspace which we did earlier and that way when you close out GIMP and reopen it your custom workspace is saved for the next time you want to work in GIMP. All right so that's it for this tutorial hopefully you liked it if you did you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to click the bell icon and be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.